So apparently Instagram launched a brand new app back in 2019. I don't know about you, but I haven't heard a single thing about it. Okay, Jade, it's not all about you. Well, if you haven't heard, there's a new app called Thread, okay? Anyways, if you didn't know what Thread was, apparently Thread is this new camera and messaging app so you can stay in contact with your close friends. I believe this is Mark Zuckerberg's intent to really focus on the future of private. If you guys didn't know, Mark Zuckerberg is the CEO of Facebook and Instagram. If you don't know that, what are you doing on my channel? But anyways, as the leader of Facebook, you know, recently with the whole data analytics scandal back in 2018, Mark has been making major efforts to make sure that everything's encrypted and data is safe. So he's really trying to go into this more private direction. However, this really got me thinking, you know, companies spend millions of dollars to launch new apps and features to keep their business afloat. But what do you do when you spend a hundred million dollars on an app to literally get crickets? You know, the app has so many bugs and it doesn't work. Ah, there's a spider! Get my pun, like bugs on the app, you know? Bugs, crickets, get it? <laughs> All right, let's get started. So to really understand how to launch a successful app, we really need to know what it takes to build an app. According to Clever Road, giving a rough answer about how much it costs to create an app will take the rate of a $50 an hour average. Now let's be honest guys, a minimum salary for a computer programmer is way beyond $50 an hour, but just for this case, we're gonna take data and learn how much it costs to build an app. A basic application will cost around $25,000, complex apps can cost 40 to $70,000, but most apps go beyond 70 grand. Now guys, if you think $70,000 for an app is expensive. <laughs> Just you wait. So I actually started an app with my co-founder back in 2018. We spent approximately $50,000, but I actually got really freaking lucky. My co-founder is actually my dad and because we're family, like I've got a major deal, yo. Like I am so thankful and lucky because the app that we built literally would have costed us half a million dollars. I'm not joking. Now, if you're wondering what app I built to literally cost half a million dollars, I'm actually wondering the same thing. But my old app was basically called PBJ and it was a personal assistant for influencers. Now I'll be talking about this more in the end of the video, but my app majorly flopped. It didn't work. And a lot of time and money was spent to realize that we had to scrap the idea. Thumbs up if you actually want to see a whole video dedicated to that. I'm really down to talk about my journey as an entrepreneur and failures. So give this video a like if you are curious and you're so far enjoying this video. All right. So now that you know, building an app at a minimum costs hundreds and thousands of dollars just because you can pay for an app. Now you actually have to make sure it works. I'm telling you most apps crash. This is just facts. This is such a, such a big thing that Instagram has a whole dedicated engineering team dedicated just to testing. Like they literally spend millions of dollars a month to pay people to break their app, to test it out. And if you're a startup like me, you don't have millions of dollars to pay employees and engineers to test your app. So the people that test it are your customers. And this is a very tricky situation because when you're launching something to market, you know, if it doesn't work, it's it's really bad. And actually with my app, we based on a lot of customer service. And at one point, so many people got angry because our app didn't work and it was just so buggy, which I'll go into, but paying and building an app is one thing, but making sure it works and you have people to test it with is a whole other. Okay, so say Instagram got through barrier one and two, they somehow have a shit ton of money. They're able to test it out with the engineers. Now you run into the last barrier, which is even if you make it through all of that, you need users on the app. And not only that, the users need to come back. This is is actually called an app's churn rate. A churn rate is the annual percentage rate at which customers stop subscribing to a service. So for Instagram, their number one goal is to make sure if a user lands on their app, they come back tomorrow and they stay coming back for five, 10 years, right? That is how the app makes money by making you addicted to the platform. Because if you leave, then advertisers can't retarget you and they can't make their coin. So why am I even talking about app churn rate in the first place, Jays? You're talking nonsense. So Instagram obviously has done a great job retaining their users. Like I am addicted to Instagram and I feel so self-centered, but I just like looking pictures at my feet and making sure I look good. Now to get into Instagram's level of retention, you got to know that that is really, really freaking hard. Their timing is impeccable, right? They created a social platform when no others existed. Now with PBJ, we had a lot of competition. So our churn rate was literally 50% every month, which means 50% of people dropped off every single month. I'll literally put a screenshot on the screen of when I was freaking my shit out when users were dropping like hotcakes. And I was just, you know, as a founder, scraping my head like what do we do and you know when your retention rate is 50 percent, you're gonna hit zero at one point and we had to make a really really hard pivot and i remember that was actually back in last summer so this is all pretty recent and my wounds are still fresh so i've learned a lot about building an app and it is not an easy process so not only as you're thinking about how to keep customers on your platform building the platform and then you have to also keep the business afloat like you have to keep making money and you're spending it at a rate that's uncontrollable like all this is happening and you somehow still have to take care of 
yourself. I will now respect so many tech founders just because this shit is really, really hard and I am not technical at all. I like making videos and doing marketing, but I cannot write a single line of code. And now I have a lot of more empathy for website builders and people who are in technology just because this shit is so for hard. And day by day, I'm learning so much. So what does this mean for threads? I think threads definitely has potential. I actually was just using the app to message some of my friends on close friend stories because I know DMs can be crazy. And it's really nice to be able to private message people and have an app dedicated to people that I care about and then people that care about me. So I really like it because it's just kind of like text message where it's all my favorite contacts and people at the reach of my hands. However, the only thing that I think threads is lacking is retention and timing. I think the app is well tested, but the question is, is this something users really want? And if so, are they willing to come back? I think once Instagram cracks that down, I think threads is going to be a huge thing. I don't know about you, but I never heard of this app literally until Instagram had to send me a notification. So yeah, let me know if you guys heard it before because I've only heard crickets. <laughs> let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Do you think threads has potential to become the new next social media platform or do you think it's just another gimmick for Instagram to make another cent? Only time can tell. And in regards to my app, for PBJ, we actually pivoted. Like I said, in summer, we had to make that really hard pivot because we were losing so many users every single month. So now we started a text message platform for influencers to talk to their fans. In the first six months, we were able to build a platform and pivot. And now we have over, I think, 100,000 contacts on our platform, which is insane. So I'm really excited for the software to be used by your favorite influencers and brands. And I'm just really proud of what we've done so far because it was definitely a scary pivot. There's this quote, I believe it's like pivot or die. Like as a startup or business, you're going to have to make changes to make sure that you're building a product that people want. And same with Instagram threads, right? And this is something they poured literally like hundreds of millions of dollars to, but they still don't know until time. So I guess this leads us to today's lesson, which is the only thing that's really constant is change. As a founder, entrepreneur, or someone making content, I think it's super important to realize that you have to change because this digital landscape is super fast moving and you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I believe that it's just so scary to do it alone. And I just want to thank you for watching this video. On this channel, we talk about social media and I guess entrepreneurship. And as someone who is an 18 year old founder, I do not know what the frick I'm doing. So thank you so much, Darwin Nation, for being here. I really appreciate your attention and shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, all you got to do is comment below. And I'm actually having a meetup in Los Angeles. This is a two day event. If you want to meet me, meet other creators, it's called the Green Room Live. If you guys want to click in the description box, you guys can sign up. I'm super excited because it's in September. So you guys can have time to book your tickets. And every year it grows bigger and bigger. Two years ago, we had an event with 50 people. Last year, there's 100. This year, we're thinking to hit around like 250 seats. I don't even know that's possible, but I am so excited to meet you guys and let you know that you're not alone. And as a influencer, or content creator. I love you and I really thank you for your attention. All right, guys, I'm going to go fix my app, pivot probably five more times and probably cry because we're bleeding money like no tomorrow. Thank you guys for watching my video. I love you guys so, so much and I'll see you guys in the next one.